Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the first Special Olympics New York Virtual Health and Wellness Forum. My name is Taylor Mead, and I am the Director of Health Programs for Special Olympics New York. And we're really excited to begin to bring this offering to our Special Olympics community. Um, so these offerings are going to happen about once a month. And we will have live as well as recorded viewing options. So if you're able to uh, to attend the evening that we are doing the forum, then that's great. We'll send out registration information. And if you need to watch it after we have recorded and loaded it up to our YouTube page, that's great too. Um, you will still be able to uh, you know participate as we go along and we'll send you the uh, forum feedback, uh, Microsoft forum as well to get your your take on what we've shared and maybe some topics that you'd like to hear in the future. Um, we are sponsored by Care Design New York, um, and I would love to send this over to Dr. Claire Watson, our first ever forum presenter. Thank you, Taylor. It is a pleasure to be here today. Just give me a minute as I get our screen share and get all of you on board with us this afternoon. You see it okay, Taylor? You're muted. You're still muted. If you want to click that from beginning in the left yep. there. I just yeah. want to make sure that you could see. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to be the inaugural presentation, the first ones for you. Um, starting off with a beautiful picture, just to tell you that there are some wonderful things that we can do with good health. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're getting rid of, you know, all of these other options in our lives for food, but we're going to have plenty of things that we're going to discuss that are about not just nutrition, but exercise and healthy habits as well. And Claire, if you want to change your display to not be the presenter, we are seeing both of the slides at the same time. Perfect. Better. That's it. Yep. That's great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So obviously I do have technical difficulties at times, so we always appreciate that we have Taylor there to assist us. Um, some of the little welcome and housekeeping notes are regarding muting microphones during the webinar. We will have a question and answer throughout. that can be answered through our chat, as well as at the very end, you can ask questions um, in the chat if you would like to, or if you want to have your voice really heard, you can ask them live after the webinar. And we are very excited to have you join us today. So this is me. I am Dr. Claire Watson. I am not a medical doctor. I am a, a scholarly doctor. So I, I have my doctor or PhD in public health. And currently I'm the interim dean at St. Bonaventure University, which is in the Western section of New York State. So we are about an hour and a half south of Buffalo, right across the border of Pennsylvania, but working with everybody throughout the state with a great group of individuals. Um, I am a Special Olympics New York public, or I should say a clinical health promotion director. I was trained in um, 2018 with um, our Special Olympics International and Special Olympics National team and very, very blessed and honored to be there. Um, and I also am a professor of public health as well as health science. This is my most important job though, right here. I'm a mom and this is my son and I, when we were, I went to do research this summer over in, that is Big Ben. It is quite a big clock over in the UK. So what we're going to discuss today and talk about are going to be things related to health. And our goal is, of course, to have you live a healthy life, little steps in everyday daily steps to have a better, healthier life in terms of whether it's less pain, less discomfort, being able to be a little bit more mobile or active, um, whether it is, you know, that I have less of a chance of having an early disease. That's the whole goal behind of this. And when we've done the research through Special Olympics New York, when they're looking at a group of 10 athletes on a team, whether it is bocce or you're looking at basketball or floor hockey, what we're seeing are specific health concerns. So some of the things that are related to this are, even though we are not the health promotion, we focus on how do you prevent tooth decay. We, we are not the ones that are actually going to be pulling or drilling or anything in our specialties. 
But it's important because what we teach plays into other specialties as well that we have in our healthy athletes. So untreated tooth decay, there's three out of 10 athletes on a team that have something that has not been treated. So they're starting to have a, a tooth that's starting to rot. It's not doing so well. It needs to have treatment to it. So that is related to nutrition. Um, other things that we see are children, and I know this is both going into a healthy aging, but whether um, you have some of the students or younger individuals that are of a childhood age on your team, we do find that out of 10 athletes, six of those 10 athletes are either overweight, so they have a a little bit more weight for their height than they should, or they maybe have more than that in the form of obesity. When we get to adults, it's even more of a concern. So out of that group of 10, there's eight that have health issues related to being overweight or obese. So only two of those would not have a weight issue related to that. And we'll talk about reasons behind it, that. How do we adjust it throughout our program tonight? And then we talk about another one that's so essential for health promotion is how do we, first of all, avoid tobacco? And secondly, how do we avoid secondhand smoke? Because with the research, three out of 10 of the athletes do have exposure to secondhand smoke which is really discouraging. That's not you smoking, that's somebody else, but it's your lungs being affected and your ability to be really good on your team being affected as an athlete. So the questions to start off with, I ask lots of questions through this, but some of them are truly I need you to answer and some are let's just think about it a little bit more. But the first one is how do we improve our health? So what I'm going to focus on throughout our presentation this evening is we're going to look at what the main emphasis is always prevention. It is so much better to prevent a health issue than to treat it. It costs less, it's less pain and less discomfort. I come from a background in medicine where I worked with patients who did have heart disease, who had a heart attack, they had surgery. And the common thing we always talked about after they'd had those was how much it hurt how much discomfort they had that they had to leave work or they um they some of them had family members that had died from it as well. And why are we not preventing it? Why were we not making these changes early on? And so that's why I moved into this whole world of prevention. So we're going to talk about food, exercise, and health habits. So the first one we focus on tonight is definitely the food. It's around dinner time. So we're going to get you thinking about how can I get all those pretty oranges, greens, and reds in my diet tonight. As you can see here, plenty of colorful options out there and especially choices. So if you say, you know, what, I'm not really a fan of asparagus. Can I try something else? We'll talk about that. So when you're looking at the energy choices, I went through and made these. So it's not so much about the, the, the what we call macronutrients, these big words that go into it, but really what do they do? What is the, so carbohydrates or energy are the first ones we're going to discuss. And with that, we have our first question. So the drum roll, please, if you want to put it in the chat or um, that'll be the best way of doing it. So what we're looking at is how many F and V, so fruits and vegetables, should you eat each day? So we'll wait, see what's coming into the chat. We have some answers. And Taylor suggested five. Yay, that's correct. And I should, when you, well, we'll go forward with that. We have the suggested and then we'll see how well we all do with it. So it is five of those fruits per day. Excellent. And it is five of the veggies. So they are not one versus the other. Um, and reality, most of us don't hit the five each day. We, I always say if we can even eat, like aim for three, that's fantastic. Five is the goal though, if we could go for there. So if you got the three in today, why not grab some grapes afterwards? Or, you know, if you want to sit down with some carrots and a healthier dip choice like hummus, that's a great opportunity for you. The other energy choices, the things that really get us up and make our brain work well, that give us our muscle energy, that we can go and run and play in our sport, that give us the energy. We do need energy to sleep even, so we can sleep well. Everything comes from these carbohydrates. So it's not just the fruits and vegetables, those are part of them, but things that are what we call whole grains. And we can have things that the whole grains just means it has more of that full nutrition. It's the, the healthiest portion of what we're looking at for the grains. So cereal 
style when we're looking at those. And some of you may like cereals like Grape Nuts or, or All Brand. Those are great choices. Um, bread. What we hope for is that you're looking at whole grain bread or whole wheat bread. And that's a, a you can put peanut butter and jelly on it. But as long as you have that good foundation, that's like your brick for your house. That's a great way to start. Pastas are another one. So you can do whole wheat pastas or some of the veggie pastas that are out there. And then rice, if we can go for whole wheat. So if you run to a store like Chipotle or a restaurant and you're picking up the choice between a white or a wheat pasta, why not try the wheat pasta? I'm sorry, rice. I'm hungry, so I need to eat something to get my brain working better. But you can go for that wheat rice and see, or the whole grain rice and see how that tastes something different. Long grain is another option entirely too. Now, this might surprise you. You're like, why is milk products in my energy choices? Well, milk does have some carbohydrates in it. So it has some energy in that respect. But we're going to push forward to the next slide because milk comes into a whole different category entirely. But I just want to make sure that when you're thinking about this, it does have some energy related to it too, especially if you're, you know, one of the individuals says, I can't eat that much before I'm exercising, but I do like a glass of chocolate milk. It's going to give you some good energy in that respect, and it'll go into our protein. So protein, and I have this listed as a the, the function. What does it do? So proteins, they're going to build our muscle. They're going to repair our muscle, especially after we've done a long, hard workout. We've done strength training. So it's going to try to make us a little bit stronger. It's trying to make us get healed up afterwards from the what we call the, the um, I don't want to use the word damage because it sounds pretty bad, but it's the way that the body does repair itself. And then lastly, because we are going into cold, flu, um, COVID season, anything else in the fall, RSV, there's a lot of those that we tend to get sick in in the fall. It's also very important in terms of our healing. Or if you've ever had the unfortunate issue of having an injury, you've sprained an ankle, you've broken a leg, anything along that line, it's very important for that healing. So you can see some of these pictures here. If it is almost dinner time for you, I hope that they're starting to get you excited for something that you may change and not think about for what your dinner is. He's like, oh, I've never tried coconut milk. What would that be like? So to give you an idea what protein is, Protein and carbohydrates, I told you about the energy side of them. They both give you energy. They both have the same amount of calories per gram that we discussed. But when we talk about the quicker energy, it comes in the form of those ones we just discussed of your pastas and your rices, your cereals as well. But here's where that milk comes back in again. So the milk products, whether it comes from an animal, so if it comes from your dairy cow and you have that big glass of chocolate milk, which is a great energy replenisher and repair um, form after you've exercised, choose it. It's really healthy for you. But maybe you're saying, you know what? I like some of the other choices. I really like soy, or I like um, more of the, the coconut milk, or I'm an almond milk person. Any of those options, by all means, plant-based milk products are really, really good for you too. And some people tolerate them better. Sometimes you might get a sick stomach or you just don't do so well with if you're having an animal-based milk product. And so the plant-based might be something that works better for you. Or if you're on medications, it might work better with that as well. Then you're sitting here and you're looking at this chicken and it's a roasted chicken and it looks delicious. And it's a great choice for you because it's another lean, healthy protein or a place to repair, rebuild and heal the body up. So it could be chicken. It could be fish. And sometimes people are like, oh, I don't know if I'm much of a fish trier. If not, it's not always something I don't always like the smell of it. So sometimes people like tuna fish from a can. They don't feel like it's the same way. But your fish like your salmon is a great choice. A lot of the, the um, fish that they use for fish fries, they can also do it as a, a an option that is broiled or baked. So it doesn't necessarily have to be fried fish. You can still eat fried fish, just not as often. And then beef, as long as it's more of a leaner beef, that's what we're looking for. And then also pork. And this depends upon some people will have these for, um, they won't eat pork because of religious reasons. But if you are looking for a leaner meat and it doesn't have any issues related to um, a religious reason, it's another good healthy meat for you as well, if you're interested in that. And pork chops take us very different than bacon. And as you can see, bacon is not on our list here. It's one of those proteins. It is a form of meat. It's one of those ones we want to limit because it is processed. So I say sandwich meats. This could be your 
anything that you get on a sub. Those are the processed ones that are cured meats, or it could be bacon as well. They have added salt to them. They have added additional um, things added to them that keep them staying fresh or that may give them color with them. And those aren't always something we want to have as often. So that's why I say just limit the processed meats. So let's move over here then. So if we're saying, all right, is protein just in meats? What if I'm vegetarian? What if I'm a vegan and I don't eat anything like that? Well, we're in luck. We could do some other things depending on where you are. If we're looking at what we call um, the option of including eggs, so you could still be a vegetarian and include eggs, they're really great for you. And there's so many ways to do eggs. You can take them with you and have them as a hard boiled egg. You can have them scrambled with some salsa first thing in the morning. They're healthy for you, they're tasty. Or maybe you're like, you know, I like them in a quiche, something totally different. That's a great thing. I just don't recommend raw eggs when they show those as like trying to get really strong and people are eating the raw eggs. This is a big thing in the past and they put it in a blender. No, don't do those. Other things you might say is I want to try something different. I don't, maybe my stomach gets upset when I eat these, or maybe I've been gaining weight, or maybe I've been told I have um, a cholesterol issue. Um, and if you've heard that word cholesterol before, that is related to it comes from animal-based products. And so if you're eating things that are not from an animal, they won't have that and they will help. So you have less risk for developing problems with your heart and heart disease. So the veggie side of things, don't let them scare you either. Because sometimes people see some of these and they're like, Oh, tofu. I've never tried it. I'm never going to try tofu. And it actually absorbs the flavor of everything around it. And there's all different levels. So you can put a, like a silken version in a smoothie. So it'll taste like strawberries when you put it with strawberries. You can do the like the a firmer version of it. And it'll be I put that with um like with Chinese food. So I'll have it with chicken and broccoli. And it has the, it takes the flavor of that the sauce that we have in it, the soy sauce. So don't always doubt it. It's a pretty good choice. But other things could be a chickpea, you know, a bunch of chickpeas on your salad, or you could have it made into a hummus. That's what it's made out. It's really healthy for you. Lentils, it's soup time. I had to put my sweater on this evening. So we're getting into soup time. So we want to make sure we can get some lentil soup. And that can be, you can make it homemade or it can be canned. And that's okay too. Just canned items have a little bit more salt in them. So we watch that. Peanuts. That peanut butter sandwich keeps coming back. So that's a great healthy choice for you too. And then the other thing, just like soup season, we're in chili season. So keep watching and you can add all kinds of beans. They could be kidney beans. They can be great Northern beans. They can be black beans on a burrito. Those are all options for you. And they're really, really healthy veggie protein. So like I said, not only energy, but repair, build and heal. So then you're going to say, what about those things that I really like? What about the ones that are, you know, that what we call is they, they taste good on your palate. And so that means on your tongue, it's like it's a richness, like ice cream would be, um, butter is on it. And those are what we call the fats. No matter what, we still need these for our lives. Sometimes people say, well, I know that I gain weight with them, or I'm worried about my heart and my health, but we still need these for so many different things our bodies do. So we just want to limit how much we have of those each day. It does not mean that you have to just ignore them because they're really in a lot of our foods that we've already discussed. Remember the picture of the chicken? That skin that's on it has a little bit more of the fat in it and it'll have it throughout the white meat and a little bit more in the dark meat as well. But it's also going to be in the milks. We talked about that chocolate milk. Um, the lowest amount of fat is usually in skim milk, but you'll still have a little bit in it. So it is in a lot of other things. So these categories of these different, the, the carbohydrates or the energy source, the proteins and the fats, they all mix together because you're not eating just one food. Broccoli, even if you have that, may have a little olive oil on it, or you might like to dip it in ranch dressing. Or if you make a, a casserole, it has all of them in there at once. We do need this. We just want to be thoughtful of how we're having it. So my favorite thing of a sweet treat is ice cream. And I lucked out the other night, I went to a charity event and I won an ice cream maker. Uh, I think it was perfect fate for that one. So I'll be sharing that with my students. We'll be making some ice cream here on campus. But that's one thing that I love and I know I love it. So I watch how often I have it or how much I'm having of it. Or I'll have things like frozen yogurt or um, ice milk or other options too. 
Milk chocolate is my other one. So ice cream with chocolate on top of them together. Um, but that's, you know, you just, again, limit how often you're having it. Butter. Butter is great. It tastes great, but it's just something that adds a lot of calories pretty quickly. And we are in Western New York. So Western New York is known for its wings. Our buffalo wings is the big thing. You may be surprised that it's really switched over that buffalo wings are not so much blue cheese, but they're ranch. Now, a lot of people eat them with ranch dressing. So people eat pizza with ranch dressing. They eat French fries with ranch dressing. I think it's become its own food group. I do. But with it, how do we make something a little bit healthier? Because we know it's going to add calories. It can also add some salt to it. And so we, how often should we be having that? I like ranch dressing too with my salad, sometimes with my, my pizza, definitely with my wings. So we just want to watch how often we're having that. But still have it in your life though, for sure. With our, I think it's our next one, if I'm not mistaken, we have a webinar on nutrition. You're going to have um, Laura Malik, who is out of the, the New York City downstate region, and she's going to do a fantastic job on nutrition. Her background is registered dietitian, so she'll go into even more detail. Other foods that I would like to limit or recommend, it, there it is, that ranch or that mayonnaise. Um, when you are in the UK, they serve mayonnaise with their French fries, which is good for about one to two after that, I'm back to the ranch dressing. It's a little bit too rich. But we want to really limit how much we have fast foods, fried foods. So French fries fall into both categories. What we like to do and what we've done when I was raising my son was we would have um, the baked French fries. So there are, you still got that French fry option, or you could do air air fryer fries, which are fantastic and a lot quicker than baked fries too. And you could do sweet potato fries um, as well as the, the, you know, the, a white or a yellow fry too. Other things we want to limit, and this doesn't mean cut these out. It just means be thoughtful of them and limit how much they're having. So it'd be sugar foods, things like baked goods. This is pumpkin muffin season. How often should you have those? Probably not as much as we would like to, but it's just something to be aware of that it, they'll have more sugar in them when they come from a bakery, especially if there's like a sugar coating on top, your Starbucks drinks, or um, they have the, the extra little sugar on top or Dunkin' Donuts, same idea. Any of your sauces, you can see a couple of those listed here. And anything that's a packaged item, we just want to watch for those because they, they try to enhance the flavor that way versus what you might be having at home. Salt's the same way. Packaged items have a little bit more. You want to watch for any sweetened juices and soda. Fruit juices are very healthy for you. It's just how often do we have them? They have great nutrition in them, but that's when the glasses of those are typically a little smaller than a regular glass of milk would be. And then soda... Some of people really like the fizz with it. If you are going to have it, try to limit it or try to substitute out with more water if you're going to have that also, or see if there's a diet option or sparkling water that you like. So as I ask you, how do we improve our health? You see this coming up. The first, if you remember, we had was food we were going to talk about. So where are we going to go next? Our same centralized area, moving into exercise. And there's a very happy heart that is there because when you're exercising, it's great for your heart. I want to remind you that you are an athlete. That is a fantastic thing. Not everybody in this world is an athlete, but you are. You represent not just your hometown, your school, your area. You represent your region and you represent New York State. And we have been so blessed that we've had athletes that represent our United States of America in our national, um, not only from the New York State side in the national games, but the United States of America in our world games. That's really impressive. So we're very proud of you. And whether you make it to that level or not, we're very proud of you. You're out there every day practicing, trying, getting better and stronger, and hopefully having fun. So with this, we want to remind you that with being an athlete, you need to take care of your body first with the exercise that we're seeing, but also that reminder of how important food is and how good, good nutrition is. So with this, what we want to remind you of is how often should I be exercising? Well, the recommendations are that if you could do 30 minutes a day, that's great. And truly most U.S. citizens, we as Americans do not get 30 minutes a day. We find that we could sit 
for hours and hours and hours, but to do the 30 minutes a day, we find that we're either tired or we can't make the time because of our schedules. So I challenge you on those days that you are not being active with your team to get out there and do something that makes you happy, that makes you excited. Even if you're not good at it, try it out. So every day, if we could do 30 minutes, that's a great way of getting more active. So the way that you can tell that it is, you're getting healthier with it, but the way that it's also making your body work is your heart rate. So you'll feel that, that pumping in your chest. Not only does it go faster, it contracts or it squeezes harder too. And so with it, when you feel like, oh, I feel like my heart's going to jump out of my chest, you could actually see it. It's not going to jump out, but you can see that the muscle tissue will be moving and because it's a healthy heart. So that's a good thing. The more active you are, the less it's going to contract as hard at the same exercise levels, which is really good. And same with your breathing. So when you'll be breathing fast and really early on with the more activity you do, you're going to find that your breathing isn't as rapid. It slows down. And don't think there's anything wrong with you. Those are really good things to have happen. The heart rate and the breathing both being adjusted are fantastic ways of making you healthier and living a longer life. That's the goal behind of it. And truly feeling better too. And there's a lot of equipment out there that you can use to measure heart rate with, or they have scales, what we call rates of perceived exertion, and you can understand what it is that, where should I be? Well, what I like to recommend is something pretty easy. It's called a talk test. So if you are exercising, you should still be able to talk. It does not mean you'll have a full conversation like I'm having with you now. You definitely cannot sing because if you're singing, you're using even more of your breathing. So that means you need to quit thinking about karaoke and start pushing a little bit more with that walk or that run. But if you can still talk, that's good. If you can't talk anymore, it might be a little too much. So then you bring it down just a little bit. But the talk test is not high tech. It's something I like to use all the time. And you can use it from the time you're a child till you're an older athlete. It works really, really well. So if you do like karaoke and you do like to sing, save that for another time. But if I can hear you sing an opera or your favorite, you know, Taylor Swift song, then we're going to have an issue while you're exercising. So why should I exercise is we're going to come into this and we know it's about the healthier, the happier, the longer life version, but we also want to figure out what is it that I need to do to get to those goals. So with it, we talk about the word cardio. It's just another word for cardiovascular. It means it's good for this lovely beating organ right here. And this is a nice healthy heart where it starts at the top and beats and then the bottom beats afterward. So all of the blood comes from this bottom part and sends it with all that great oxygen throughout the body, which is wonderful. This top part's getting the 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 with the blood flow that has um has already worked through the body. So it's coming from the lungs, getting the good action and then pushing it through. So we want that not just today, not just tomorrow, but in 20 years, in 40 years to work really, really well. Other things that we want to do is the strength side of things. So we have the cardio, which might be that you're um, going for a jog, might be that you are playing basketball, um, that you are, you know, a little bit more active with your soccer team that you're on, any of those things. Or on the days that you're off, you're going for a walk with your family or with the individuals that you live with in your residence. But the other thing is we also want to have strength. And this is really important as well. Typically, um, we want people would put this on the back side. They were like, I'm not worried so much about the strength side, but we really need to focus on this because we want one for you to be able to lift things a little bit easier to push things better. So you don't end up getting injuries, but we know that this is also essential for the overall physical activity and physical health. So with this, it does not mean that you're going to turn into this massive bodybuilder by doing some, you know, body weight exercises or by lifting um, five pound weights for doing a bicep curl. That won't happen. If you have to do a lot of very heavy repetitions over a long period of time. And so we don't worry about that, but it will give you a little bit more definition. And that's a great thing because that just means that your body is responding better. And when you have more of the muscle that's here, it helps to, um, it works better in terms of using the energy that you've eaten for your food, the term metabolism, it works a little bit more efficiently.
That's a great thing. And we all want to be able to live and do things as we're older. And this is things such as I want to be able to put my laundry away. I want to be able to put things up on a top shelf. I want to be able to, um, you know, play with my dog and lift them up as they also get older. So those are important things of being able to lift and push and do these better. The combination of both of these is that endurance side. So this is when you are doing the activities like when you're playing basketball, but you're not only increasing the strength and the, um, the health of the muscles, but also that heart muscle. So they can work better and longer. So remember what I talked to you about that, that talk test and the breathing and everything will get better and better when you keep doing more of it. So you may have to keep, and you will have to keep increasing the intensity of your exercise because you're getting stronger every single day. You will have to increase the number of repetitions of an activity you're doing like a bicep curl. You will have to increase the weight. So you may go from the five pounds up to seven pounds, but the same time when you're increasing the number of pounds you're lifting, bring those repetitions just down a little bit. You don't want to increase both of those at the same time. You may be really excited because you're feeling great, but take your time because we want to make sure you don't get injured. And most importantly, you don't get soreness of muscles because when we get sore, we tend to fall back on the couch and we don't get back into our exercise. And that's where stretching comes in. So you can do your workout, play with your team that you have. You finished up your, your event for the day. Afterwards, everybody sit down and do your stretches on the ground or stand and hold on to something while you're stretching out the muscles in the front of your leg. You know, we want to be certain that we take the time for this. And it could be even when you're sitting on the computer too long and you need to just, you know, gently stretch from side to side. We don't want you to have injuries and we don't want you to have that soreness side of things. This soreness can take you out for, um, it does not necessarily have to be something severe, but it can make you not be able to be active for three to four days afterwards. Um, injuries can be much longer. So taking that time to stretch before a little bit and then a lot afterwards are going to be the best way to keep you healthy. And the other thing I recommend is be active other times of the day you're not in sport. It's easy to get online and watch videos, whether they're YouTube or Netflix or anything else, and want to spend hours on end. You're like, oh, I've seen four episodes of SpongeBob. That, you know, can add up to an hour right there. And I say SpongeBob because we've watched a lot of that in our house with my son growing up. And he's great. And Patrick, they're all funny, but those are 15 minutes a piece. And you're like, wow, I could have had two exercise sessions in there. I could have had one. So the other times of the day, if you're not exercising, go out and do something that makes you happy. That is active though. Get up and do some stairs or, or do some stretching or, or just, you know, get more involved. So it's every, um, you shouldn't be sitting for more than an hour at a time. If you can get up every half an hour, that's even better. So get up from your chair. If you're playing a game, video game or at your work or, or, and you're just sitting there, get up, walk around the house, do a push up or two. If, if you're allowed to, if you can, and then get back to it. So when we're looking at this next stage, why is this important? Also, this is part of the exercise side. This is bone density. So everything that we're talking about today is um, not just for the general population, but when we're also concerned about individuals with intellectual differences, because there can be different medications that can affect this. It could be um, different lifestyle choices. It could be genetics. Those are all things that can happen. So bone density is just a really simple, or I should say, make it sound like we'll make it simple, is how strong are those bones. So when you see this, and he's getting very strong and very muscular at the same time, nice and healthy, this is something we want to have. The more physical activity you do, the stronger your bones will be. And that is going to be everything from um, if you're doing, you're playing basketball and you're bouncing it. And so your hands and your fingers are going to be more so, or it could be your hips, which is something that as we get older, people have a broken hip. You might've heard of that before. We want to make sure if they, first of all, they're strong, so they do not fall, but if they do fall, they they do not break a hip. Those are a big deal. So as I mentioned, there's different medications that may affect the bone density. Some of those that are out there, that might be some that you are on. So you can always talk to your doctor about this and they can talk to you about maybe you need to have additional foods that have calcium in them to make the bone strong, or it might be something along the line of a calcium supplement. So there's lots of them that are out there. They're like a chew and they taste pretty good too. As I mentioned, calcium is this what we call a mineral. It is something that makes us really strong on all of these bones here. So there's choices here. I want to make sure you see everything available. So maybe it is milk for you. 
And it could be the, the animal milk, remember, or it could be the veggie milk. Those are both options. Spinach. Now, if you remember Popeye, which is probably not in everybody's generation, but Popeye, he would eat spinach. And when he did, he had, he grew muscles really quickly. Well, that also increases bone strength. That was the other piece behind of it. But I don't know if it was going to make it as cool in terms of muscles versus bones. So he might've looked a little bit more hulkish in that respect to be really tall and giant. So, but that was a big thing. So think of Popeye and that's why he's on the, the spinach cans sardines. I had to throw that in there. I don't know if you like sardines. If you don't know what they are, they come in a small little can and you roll up the can and they are full fish, little tiny fish that are in there. So they are sort of looking at you. They are in an oil. And the reason why they have so much calcium is because they have the bones in them, but this is not a bone that you have to worry about. Like that's going to poke into your gum. They are very chewy. They're very edible and they're not sharp and they're not going to hurt your teeth or anything else. But sardines, they have a great source of calcium. So in case you like that, some people like sardine sandwiches with mustard. Give you the options that are out there. Um, beans are another great one. So that chili that you're making, beans are fantastic. And then coming back to whether it's almonds that you'd like a handful of, or if you're talking about the almond glass of milk with a little bit of chocolate in it, that's another great way of getting calcium in your day. Besides what you're eating, because we had a, you know, I'm like I said, I'm getting hungry for dinner too. I bring back the food choices, but this is why it's the exercise side. Anything that makes you um, very active and we call weight bearing. So you're doing the activity that's putting the pressure on those bones and joints, um, ligaments, muscles, all different terms for everything that's connecting our body together. But if you can jump, if you bounce, I include skipping right in there. You don't have to run. You can walk also. Hiking is another great option. Some people like to skate. I know we have a, not just, um, we're talking about our fall sports, but going into winter sports, like ice skating is a, a very popular one. If you like to dance, whether you have good dance moves or not, we will never judge. Mine are the, like the, so I get it entirely. Um, and I do that for my students too. And, but it helps them remember different, very important concepts in their classes. But get out there and show, you know, your dance moves. Maybe you want to play yoga. Maybe you play tennis with your friends or your family members. They're all really, really good for you. I did not include swimming in here. Swimming is and biking are both very healthy for you, but they're not putting as much weight bearing as some of these other activities are that you have here. And so with them, still do them. They're wonderful for your lungs, for your heart, for your muscles. But what we all do and what we recommend to our athletes that are here is that those swimmers, they also do dry land. They do conditioning. The bicyclists, they get out there and they walk as well. So it gives more bone strengthening. And just play your sport. Just have fun with it. That's one of the big things. Um, enjoy what you're doing every day because that is, it reminds you that you are an athlete and you are talented. That's why you're in that sport. Some of the other things that go into this exercise piece I wanted to finish up with before we go into the healthy habits, because this is sort of bridging the both of those, is called healthy weight. So with healthy weight, when we're looking at this, we're saying, how do we make this work? Well, Let's ask you the question first. Do you know what BMI is? Those three little letters that do say a lot and why we use it. So if you have an answer and you wanna put that in the chat, we would love to see what your thoughts are. We have stuff coming through in the chat. Body mass index. Great. That is excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. So it is body mass index. And then why are we using it? Well, it's going to give us an indication of our weight for our height. That's the way I like to say it. I don't like to use the words fat or skinny. Uh, the terms overweight and obese are official classification terms that we use. But when I always am just thoughtful about, are we in a healthier zone versus maybe we're pushing a little bit too unhealthy either for being too thin or unhealthy for being too heavy either. So that's the way I like to describe it. But it measures your weight for your height. So even someone that is like, I saw Shaquille O'Neal once, so Shaq, and an airport and he's easy to identify because he is tall. And so with it, you see him come through, he would have a BMI that would be out of range because he is very tall, but he was also very muscular when he played in the NBA. And so with it, it would be, even though his height stretches him out, he would be in a category that pushed him a little bit more. 
individuals that are more muscular like he is would put them in a different category. We just really like to know this because it gives an indication of where we are for good health, okay? Because what we know is that when we are in a healthier weight zone, it reduces our risk for a chronic disease. What that means is an risk for having high blood pressure, for having problems with our heart, with having um, metabolism issues or endocrine is the fancy word for things like diabetes. Those are things that we want to reduce our risk for, for having a stroke, um, anything that could be a long-term health issue that can lead up to it. Less joint and muscle pain because nobody likes to be uncomfortable. And this is not because you sprained your ankle out on the, you know, the soccer field or your wrist when you were throwing your bocce ball or releasing it. But this is more along that line of just an everyday ache and pain because you have a lot of weight on those joints. You will have more energy. We're spending a lot of money in our country to buy energy in the form of coffee or energy drinks or bars or anything else. So how about we just lose, you know, if we need to lose weight, it's something you'll want to discuss with your physician. And do we need, um, you know, to discuss that? And will it give us more energy? And then sleep better. Another thing we are really trying to do better with overall. So with that, just like I said, with your doctor, when you go for your appointments, and it may be once a year, probably more than that, just to make sure medications are going well, um, listening, and if you have any other conditions such as asthma or high blood pressure, anything else, that they'll want to check you more regularly. One of the things that we do at our Healthy Athletes Health Promotion event is we check blood pressure, and we can go through a bunch of these in a really short period of time. And the reason why we do this is because it is so important to have a manageable blood pressure. So when you come over to our tables, if you've not done these before, if you've done it before, you know what it's like. We have you sit for a few minutes and have you relax because if you just want a medal, that excitement is going to increase your heart rate and your blood pressure as you have that medal hanging around your neck. So for weighing you, we're going to have you take the medal off and then we have the blood pressure. You can put it back on, but we're going to have you sit for a few minutes because it's going to bring that blood pressure back to normal and because the, the nervous system. System, the excitement of winning. Our goal is to have 120 over 80 or less. And this isn't uh, two numbers that they're going to share with you. This one can be higher. This one can be lower. Depends on what it is that we're looking at. When we work with you as um, health practitioners, we'll look at each of those separately because they're both important to tell us what's going on with your heart and the pressure throughout the body. So if we're a little bit more concerned, it's not necessarily always going to put you into a taking a medication, but what can I do to lower my blood pressure? So here are some things that you can do that are those going into our next stage of health habits. Hey, look at there. Exercise again. Always our favorite. You know I was going to bring in food because those are the ones we've been focusing on. So trying to eat things that are low salt. If you have that habit that you pick up that salt shaker before you taste it, I challenge you to try something different. Taste it first. See what it's like. That's a it's a tough habit to break. People really get into that from a young age sometimes. Taste it first. Mm, okay, then put on your salt. Maybe you won't add it two shakes. Maybe you'll just add one shake now. Maybe you won't add anything. And then anything that is more of a processed food, it's going to be higher. So when we're looking at the packaged foods or the fast food options, any of those, baking soda, um, things that are added to them that have sodium chloride or salt in them, they're going to have a little bit more salt. And you can taste it. Chips, the things that we know are not as healthy. What about weight loss? When we talked about that before, that's another great way. Like I said, it reduces your risk for other issues. We want to control our stress. That's a big one also. And it is hard. Life is not always easy, whether you're worried about getting COVID again or getting, you know, how well am I going to do on my um, my team and how well am I doing with that? Relationships, getting to see your family often, the jobs that you have, the stress is there. We, we understand that every single day. And it's just, how do we control it? My way personally of doing it is this one right here, the exercise. I get up every day and I run and it's a, my way of dealing with it. And it helps me get a better focus on my, my life. Um, I, it does not mean I'm running a marathon anytime soon. I have it as a goal, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I do exercise and it's great for me. Some others may be talking to friends. Some people may be doing this through, um, just being with your team in general. It might be that you watch a TV show that helps you relax. Laughter is a big one too. And then when you can reduce your blood pressure, you're also gonna be able to sleep better. So that's a very important thing that we keep focusing on because sleep is truly the foundation for all of our good health. 
The other side of this is if you have gone to your physician and they recommend a medication for this and you are working with, um, you're taking on your own, you have a pill minder. Um, I know they have the, the cool ones out there. They're even like a Siri enhanced or an Alexa enhanced one. Your parents, your, your, um, your caregivers, they're all helping you with this as well. Take those medications as directed because they're important for you. Don't stop them and don't try to, you know, reduce them without talking to your physician first. And if you ever have anything like you don't feel great after taking those, you can always talk to them about that too. So the last piece that we're going to finish up with tonight is our health habits. And we've been sort of seeing that theme come through the whole time, but now we're just going to focus on that entirely. We've talked about those yummy foods and how we can get them in our, our lives for our energy, for exercise. So we do well with our sports and we can increase that the strength of the heart. But about those health habits? So as you can see here, this is going to be one we're definitely going to focus on. You guessed it, hand washing. Don't worry, I will not make you sing the ABC song tonight. You have to do that on your own. The first one I'm going to start with, though, is one that is harder to deal with sometimes when you're around other individuals that may be smoking. So we'll address it both for if it's your own personal life and people that you're around. But it is so important in terms of your health. And so we want to really focus on this. And I love this cartoon. You can see it that um, we got you something and they got them. This is called oxygen. So these are little lungs in case you couldn't guess by the cartoon because our lungs, I guess, would possibly smile as well as our heart when we are doing good things for them. But you can see this heart saying, I love it. I'm going to share it with everyone which is everything within the body. So it's a great little cartoon. When we smoke, we have issues related to this oxygen, both for the heart and for the lungs as well. So when I say no to what should we not be doing, we should not be vaping. Anything with the electronic cigarette side of things is not a healthy option. Cigarettes in general, the original ones that they've had for a long period of time, they thought vaping might be a, a way of getting closer to quitting smoking. Vaping is still quite an issue and has its own health problems related to it because you may be smoking and I should say inhaling many more times than you would have had with a cigarette. We don't want you to chew tobacco either. Not healthy either. I, I didn't, I included a cute cartoon so you didn't have to see those pictures of the, the gums and the teeth that have been destroyed by chewing tobacco. If you've heard of Zins, those are another form that are a nicotine um, version of it. So something else we don't recommend. Marijuana, even though it is legal in New York, it is still a drug. It is not healthy and causes health problems for you. And then you're like, oh, maybe I would look cool if I smoke an old fashioned pipe or anything. Nah, cigars. Neither of those are healthy for you either. If you are smoking and these are, or you're trying any of these other options, work with your health professional, your doctor or um, your nurse, and you might see them more frequently if they're coming to visit. Talk to them about it and see what you can do to stop. And definitely don't start if you're not doing it. Do you remember at the beginning we talked about that three out of 10 people on a team of athletes will have people around them that are smoking? So three of them have that exposure to secondhand smoke. It might be a family member. It might be a caregiver of somebody else. And what we need you to do is to be open and tell them how you feel. So here are some great suggestions that Special Olympics has come up with that you can use. These are not mine, but I love them and I share them with my students and my athletes as well. So say to them, I'm an athlete. I need clean air. Could you smoke outside, please? Being the best at my sport is important to me. Please don't smoke around me. And the other one is it makes me happy when you don't smoke, because not only are you taking care of yourself and protecting yourself, but you know that if someone that you love doesn't smoke, they'll live a longer life too. So as I'm getting more and more in this conversation, I can feel that I'm starting to get a little dehydrated. So this water bottle is looking pretty happy and mine otherwise looks nothing that that fancy at this point. But I also want to include this cute little watermelon here. The reason why is hydration is so essential for us, but we can get it in other ways. But let's start off with just the water or the liquid side of things. So in the chat, if you want to add at this point, how many glasses, so these are questions, or bottles of water should you drink each day? So you can say for either one, do you think number of glasses or numbers of bottles of water you should have? What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat, please. Okay, so chat's coming through. 
Five glasses. Woohoo! You guys are doing great tonight. I wish I had prizes I could just throw out at you. So this is great. So when we're looking at the glasses of water, every glass of water is different. So as you can see, this is a little bit of a smaller glass of water. I know a lot of people are carrying around those huge flasks that are, they're using them and refilling them throughout the day as well, which are gallons of water. But if we could look at the, the five glasses or bottles of water, that's a great start for the day. That's what we're hoping for. And the bottles have a little bit more in them. So if we're looking at those, and what we want you to remember is that if we're looking at this, is that we, I said the glasses because they were smaller than the bottles. So the five bottles, what we're looking for. When you, anytime that you're starting to feel a little bit like that dry mouth that's happening, or you feel a little bit thirsty, that means your body already needs water. So if you're going into an athletic event or practice and you're like, I'm a little bit dry or I'm thirsty, drink before you even get started. Take a, you know, a couple of a glass just to start with, because maybe you worry about it getting sloshy in your stomach and being a little bit crampy, but get a, you know, a, a few sips of water and drink throughout practice. Your coaches are going to be great for that. So they'll encourage it also. And the reason why is it is so important for so many other areas of our body, our joints. So that's where our, our bones are connected together, as well as our muscles, our ligaments, everything that's keeping us, you know, put together like glue would be. Um, it's really important for our mouth and our teeth. Sometimes if you feel like, oh, my breath may not be the best, one of the quickest ways is to drink more water and get that in there. And that will help because some of the medications you may be on will reduce the amount of saliva being produced. And so it makes you more dry too. And it'll, it, what can it do? It can it affect those teeth. So that's why people can have more teeth and um, dental issues um, when you're looking at more of the medications that might be on. I use the word guts. This is really important. The reason why I say this is so you can, it's more expansive than that. It's not just going to the bathroom to, to pee. It might be also to, you know, to make a bowel movement or to go to the bathroom, that number one versus number two. That's really important. And so if you feel like your guts aren't really working that well, like you're straining sometimes or you go to the bathroom and it's, there's not, it's not a color that should be, it should be clear when you're going to the bathroom, when you're talking about your urine output, then you may need to drink a little bit more and then it might help everything go through a lot quicker. That's the goal. It should. It's like pipes. So drink a little bit more fluid. It makes your skin a little bit more um, elastic. It doesn't look so dry as well. So that's a healthy aging piece. And it definitely makes your heart work better. And so you can see this lovely little watermelon. It doesn't necessarily have to be start off with the water and the hydration, but you can have a lot of different foods that are out there that are also going to help you with that. So a homework that I have for you is, and this is something from Special Olympics recommends it, is for your next practice or your next competition, take a selfie with you and drinking water. Doesn't matter what, you know, brand it is or anything, but showing that you do pledge to drink more fluid in the form of water to keep you healthy. All right, finishing up. So we only have a few more chats left. I think this might be the last one, actually. So why do we wash our hands? What do you think? to wash off germs. Great answer. And I love the word germs because they almost look like little creepy crawlies, which they are under a microscope. So yes, we are going to wash off those germs and to stay healthy. That is our goal. So with it, when do we wash though? What are the times that we should be? If you want to put that in the chat. Before we eat. Perfect. Yep. That's the best one, I think, because sometimes if we forget the other ones, at least, you know, before we eat. So the recommendation will be that um, before you eat. So thank you. After the bathroom, for sure. That's an important one. And then after you've played your sport, or you've been around a lot of other people. Other things, too, might be when it, your public transportation, if you're on a subway or a bus, that's another great place. Or you've been in, you know, um, like an, an area, it could be a gym, it could be a restaurant, it could be a, a clothing store, whatever, where there's a lot of hands that have touched other places. As long as you're, you know, you're going to wash after that, or more importantly, before you eat, that's a big deal. So good. And then with it, use soap. So we always ask one of the things within our health promotion is do you have soap in the house? It does not have to be, it could be a, a bar of soap, it could be the pump and liquid soap, whatever works for you, it could be the foaming soap, but you want to scrub for 20 seconds. That's where you can practice your singing. So the birthday, 
this song. It could be um, the ABCs. It could be your favorite song that is out there right now by the weekend. It doesn't matter. Um, it could be an oldie if you like Elvis, whatever it is, as long as you get those hands scrubbed and cleaned up. And it is our best way to keep us healthy because anytime that we, one of the things with COVID originally is that we started having less other um, illnesses as well. And, but the reason why was we weren't touching our eyes because we had the masks on and some were wearing like a plastic face shield. We weren't touching our nose. We weren't touching our mouth after as we would normally do. And those are simple ways that we can, you know, bring in germs and make us sick. So if we could just consider that, be thoughtful, try not to, you know, touch your eyes or your nose, or your mouth as often, unless you've been washing your hands or you can use a hand sanitizer, let it dry really good though, before you touch any of those areas. Otherwise it'll burn. It's not a good thing. So here's our very happy dancer. She's finishing up because it's not just something that aging means that we're having grayer hair or that our joints are start to ache a little bit. She looks like she's not having any aging issues. But all of those things that we've talked about so far tonight have been about making sure that you are healthy and happy as you do age. When we look at intellectual differences and the the, the research that's behind it, it amazes me that they can say things such as individuals, and we've seen this research with Down syndrome, um, can live shorter lives up to 20 years less than someone that does not have that, um, you know, that syndrome. And so that's an incredible amount of years when you think about it. But from the 60s, 1960s until now, the length of a life of an individual that does have Downs has, is profoundly increased. So we talk about like exponential or how much longer it's gotten. It's so the the education, the knowledge that we have, the the activities that people can do, they have um, health issues in general. And with, like I said, some of these meds can add more to it, but you can live a long, healthy life. And that's where we want to focus um, on improving our health for our heart and reducing blood pressure and that healthy, active weight is all good. So keep active. That's a big piece. It's going to keep you happy, which is a, as we focused on, and it will make those joints, as we said, not so uncomfortable when we're Try and do those. Try not to fall. We don't want to have that happen. We get an injury that goes with it. Keep playing your sports. Maybe you'll, you'll change. Maybe you're a you know a figure skater now, and you may change to bocce in the future. It just depends on what excites you. Always eat well. That's a big thing. Sometimes as we get older, we don't have as much of an appetite, but with it, you still want to eat healthy, nutritious things. Always take those meds if you need them if they're prescribed to you. Keep going to that physician's office and talk to him. That's why I need to drink more. Give me one quick second. You get high dehydrated when we're talking so much about hydrating. Um, but take those meds as needed. Talk to your physician. And talk to them about anything else that's new or that might feel a little bit different than what you've had before. Ask them all kinds of questions about your life and what's going on with it, your thoughts about your health. They're going to be there to answer them. The same as when you go to Healthy Athletes, we're all going to be here to answer those questions for you too. We may not be able to ask, answer specific ones if that's not my specialty, but we can talk to you about your health promotion and make sure that we're doing everything we can to stay healthy. And the most important part, of course, is to laugh throughout this life and have a lot of fun. And you can see she's having a blast. I hope I can dance like that today, let alone as I get more and more grays on this head. So with it, we have, a, you know, we want to remind you of how blessed we are to be able to work with you, but also how proud we are of how much work that you do and that you represent um, Special Olympics New York. So keep up the good work as you're going into all the fall fun activities that we have coming up soon whether you're over here in our Western region or you're over with Taylor over in the Albany area or anywhere else across our state, we'd love to see you participate and come see us at the health promotion events that we have. As I said, mine is Healthy Athletes Health Promotion. So this is what we cover within it. But you may be looking at sort of like with this, you may be seeing that the eyes, the opening eyes, you may be doing the dental side with the smiles. You may be looking at the, the podiatry side of the fit feet. There's a lot of different specialties out there. Come and see us and talk to us, whether you can see us at one event and then um, you can't see everybody. But if you come like to the fall games and there'll be more of us that'll be there to, to spend time with you and answer questions and give you treatment and discuss your health concerns. At this point, I would open it up for questions, or we can always have questions sent to either Taylor Mead, who is um, our wonderful associate at Special Olympics New York, or you can have, um, and then she can send them to me as well if you do have those.
Absolutely. So what we'll do is in the chat, we'll share the Microsoft form that uh, allows anybody who watches this forum either live or after the fact to be able to uh, submit any questions they may have, as well as any feedback or possible topics uh, that we can go over in our next upcoming forums. Um, so that has been uh, put in the chat and we also will share that in the information section alongside our YouTube video. Um, just two quick things before we sign off for tonight. We do have our October offering uh, coming up on October 17th. Uh, that is going to be Nutrition Basics, uh, Supporting Athletes for Realistic Change. So we will have the details for that as well in the uh, notes for the YouTube video. Um, and that will also be on our Special Olympics New York website. If you have any questions, please always reach out to health at nyso.org. And we will get back to you to, to help you out with whatever uh, the, you are looking to have answered. Um, and then the last thing is, obviously, we want to give a huge round of applause and a big thank you to Dr. Watson for all of the time that she has put into uh, this presentation this evening and uh, her expertise and her willingness to work with us and our athlete population um, does not go unnoticed by so many people at Special Olympics New York. We are lucky that she is a clinical director for us and we look forward to all the work that we have coming up in the near future with her. So thank you so much, Dr. Watson. Thank you, Taylor, for allowing me to, to share tonight. It was a true pleasure. So thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for joining. And like we said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, we will see you in about a month for our next forum offering. Thanks.